Okay, so after that slightly Windows 95 introduction uh, music, we have the Zorin OS 18 uh, tour, which is a very nicely put together uh, brief tour of your uh, desktop distribution. Um, so it tells you uh, if you want to find things, then go to the menu to launch apps and uh, we then get the Zorin appearance uh, options and this is how you customize the look of your desktop environment. As you can see, by the way, I've switched to OBS view. Uh, I have OBS running down here. Given that this is Zorin OS Pro, obviously uh, the um, with Zorin OS Pro, you get all the applications installed by default. So I haven't had to go and download OBS. It was already installed. So that's quite a nice little feature. Back to Zorin Appearance, there are quite a few different options. Uh, I think with Zorin OS uh, Core Edition, which uh, has n not all of the apps, it has some apps, uh, but just the basics. But uh, this Pro Edition has uh, all the apps that you could uh, possibly want uh, in, in there. So uh, lots to play with uh, on this edition of Zorin OS 18 Pro. Zorin Appearance, uh, you have um, options of Windows uh, type environments. Um, just as a side note, I do like uh, that this task panel or the panel down here is now uh, got rounded corners. It looks a lot more modern and sleek. Uh, so you have, yeah, this kind of Windows type environment where there's a menu here and then obviously if you want to access sub menus then you can go in and access the sub menus like so. Um, if you want a slightly different menu system but a slightly narrower panel at the bottom then you can choose the second option and again it's the same sort of thing with the application launcher. Uh, here we have a kind of Windows 11 almost uh, environment and uh, here we can uh, go to show apps and it brings up a whole uh, large screen with all the applications on there a little bit like uh, apple does uh, when uh, with their dash um, and i believe it's called dash actually um, a bit of a shame that they haven't uh, included by default the uh, blur my dash uh, gnome extension that you can get hold of i think that's a really nice uh, extension, so that's something that uh, if I was to keep on running this, I would certainly uh, have that. It would be a bit better than this kind of plain uh, background and would feel a bit more modern if that was blurred. But that's easily done. You just download GNOME extensions and uh, enable Blur My Dash. Um, another option here is this one, which uh, moves the panel up to the top here with the time in the center, uh, a la Mac OS. Uh, like and uh, your controls are, are there. Um, in terms of accessing the applications, you have to press the super key and uh, you show apps and again you get your dash there. Um, this option here is your sort of Mac OS type option and uh, this time the application launcher is uh, is really minimized it's not really an application launcher except for uh, you can quickly access your desktop documents downloads uh, which will launch files which is your default file manager in Zorin and you can quickly get to software and settings and Zorin appearance you can also shut down restart and lock your system as well so it's a, it's a much more finder-esque type uh, menu that you would see on Mac OS again the time is all up here in the top corner and uh, the main panel is at the top with a dock at the bottom. So that's that's all pretty good. You can pin applications to the dock at the bottom as well. Uh, the application show apps uh, again like Mac OS uh, brings up the large dash applications uh, dash um, dashboard um, and uh, the dashboard then uh, yeah, you can see how many applications are installed with uh, Zorin OS. Quite a few. Um, there's lots to be playing around with in there. If you want a more Ubuntu-esque feel, and indeed, uh, of course, Zorin OS is based on uh, Ubuntu. So, uh, yeah, you can choose uh, this Ubuntu-type feel, which has this kind of um, 
right angle <laughs> approach to the desktop environment and um, yeah it's it's pretty neat if you if you like that sort of thing further down uh, we've sort of got a hybrid mac os type environment but with a slightly larger sort of the finder-esque type uh, clicking in the left hand corner uh, you have this uh, large uh, application launcher here as well uh, rather than using the dash uh, dashboard to launch your applications and then back to uh, more or less uh, Zorin's default which is this one here and then you have one which uh, it's quite nice actually uh, puts the uh, task panel uh, all together in uh, a dash sorry all together in a dock like uh, environment down the bottom here and you get your application menu there as well so a lot of uh, a lot of things you can play with and tweak within Zorin Appearance. You can also change the theme, change the accent color. You've got different effects, so you can enable uh, jelly mode if you want. So if you like your uh, <laughs> jelly-like windows, you can do that. You can enable desktop cube as well to to uh, switch between uh, screens. There we go. Three finger uh, gesture on the trackpad will allow me to switch. So that's really cool, very uh, very retro that, um, and so on. You can you can do all sorts in 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 here. It's all here. Um, you can also uh, choose how uh, when you click on the title bar, what happens. Whether you double click to maximize it or single click, a la KDE environment uh, and interface. Uh, you can choose what your super key, your left super key, will do, um, and your default fonts, of course. So that's all in Zorin Appearance, a nice, nicely put together uh, control panel for controlling the uh, appearance. You can now connect your uh, online accounts as well. Um, so that's also uh, pretty nice. You could do that in previous versions of Zorin, but now uh, we can connect Microsoft 365 and OneDrive. Uh, and this means that you can uh, more tightly integrate with your Microsoft account if you have one. And certainly if you are coming from Microsoft Windows, uh, you will probably have been forced to have a OneDrive account uh, because, uh, yeah, Microsoft um, are very keen for you to uh, sign up to everything they've got uh, and give all your life away to them. <laughs> uh, but if you have done that and you are migrating from Microsoft, then uh, you can uh, integrate your 365 account and all your uh, OneDrive will appear in here, so that's quite nice. Uh, you can also connect your Google account uh, in a similar sort of fashion. And again, your Google Drive will appear as an extra drive in files. Uh, also things like Google Photos and things like that can tightly integrate. You can also integrate with Nextcloud, Microsoft Exchange and other SMTP email clients. Of course, you can also connect uh, your phone with uh, Zorin Connect as well. Uh, this only works for Android phones. Uh, it doesn't work for iOS, given that iOS uh, is a more tightly integrated walled garden type uh, operating system. So uh, it doesn't really work with uh, iOS phones. But I will say that with iOS phones, uh, if you plug them in, uh, to your machine they will appear as a drive and you can indeed uh, share information uh, using that as well that's quite nice of course uh, then you have your uh, application uh, or your software center um, that's this thing here and um, it's really the default GNOME uh, or GNOME uh, software center what you will see now with uh, Zorin uh, OS 18 is uh, there's always a search bar in the, in the top left corner, it will be in the same place. So if you go to files, there you go. So you'll see a search everywhere button there. So that makes a lot of sense in terms of how the uh, operating system flows. Right, so what else is new in Zorin OS? Well, the uh, default internet browser is Brave. And if we launch Brave here, um, you can see that launches with Zorin.com OS as the default page. And um, actually, if we go to uh, Zorin OS, um, currently, because this is uh, this is a pre-release of uh, Zorin OS 18 that the Zorin team have kindly let me uh, use for this review on the day of uh, Zorin OS 18 release, 
uh, indeed Independence Day for Windows users, um, uh, you can see that to uh, actually obtain Zorin OS Pro, it's not free. Uh, it is uh, £47.99 uh, in the UK, and that includes uh, their sales tax as well. And um, yeah, it's it's not an insignificant amount. And there you can see it has a good uh, description of all the different types of uh, appearances that are available out of the box, um, which is pretty, pretty good. And you can see exactly uh, as well all the applications they've listed and things that you can do with Zorin out of the box uh, without having to uh, add any uh, any more applications. Uh, what I will say is that, of course, uh, most of these applications, or in fact, all of these applications are in some shape or form open source and free. So um, they, if you were to download Zorin uh, OS Core, then you could build your own uh, pro environment if you wanted to, just by uh, uh, researching the applications you want and uh, downloading them from the App Center. Uh, or application sent software center, I should say, <laughs> on on here um, and doing that yourself. You can, of course, use apt-get because this is an Ubuntu base uh, as well in the command line or the terminal. But it is a very nicely uh, put together uh, system. And as you can see, um, in terms of design language, it is very consistent. And that's what I really like about Zorin OS. It's consistent. So one of the other new features with Zorin OS 18 is how you manage tiles. Now you were able to, uh, of course, uh, put things in the top left corner and they will tile automatically. Uh, or if you drag it to the edge, it will, it will tile to the side. Um, but uh, now uh, with Zorin OS 18, a bit like Windows 11, you can choose uh, where those windows sit or those applications sit. Uh, on your screen. So for example, you can choose that. And if we were to open up files, uh, we can then drag that to the middle. And then if we were to choose another application, I don't know, I've got so many, I <laughs> get confused about which one to choose. Uh, um, I'll click anything, Jason, click anything. Uh, right, Frazero, there we go. Uh, <laughs> right, there we go. So, and then we'll just stick that there. So. It's a really nice way of sorting out your windows, uh, particularly if you're on a small screen and you can't see uh, all your applications at one time. It's quite a nice way of um, having all your applications on the screen in one place. Um, so that's quite nice. Um, and uh, it's very similar to the way Windows 11 works. Now, given that this is, uh, of course, a uh, old uh, laptop, you can see actually it works uh, pretty seamlessly in Zorin 18. And one of the things I will say about this release of uh, Zorin is that it seems to be very quick and nimble on this old laptop. Uh, this is a 5600U Intel uh, CPU. So it's only got two cores with four threads, um, well out of the uh, requirements of Windows 11. Uh, it doesn't even have TPN2. Uh, but uh, this system really runs like new, um, not just new, but it runs fast, very fast. Uh, it feel, feels like a modern laptop in a modern operating system. So that's one of the benefits, I believe, of uh, installing Linux full stop on your uh, older hardware is that it will make your hardware feel like a fresh new machine and make it run like new. So if you're satisfied with your current hardware, be it uh, Intel Mac or a uh, Windows PC that doesn't meet the Windows 11 uh, requirements, then yeah, you, I think uh, something like Zorin OS really makes a big difference to longevity of your hardware. Um, and you don't necessarily need to shell out for uh, for brand new latest hardware. Uh, indeed, that if you look at the uh, Geekbench results uh, from over the years, uh, when you compare the CPUs, there isn't a, a really hasn't really been a huge jump in CPU speed for quite a few years. Um, when you compare Intel CPUs, of course, when you're looking at things like the M1 Mac, then 
yeah, that's uh, that's uh, quantum quantum jump <laughs> ahead. And actually, the newer Intel CPUs are really um, making a dent into that as well and starting to get a lot quicker. But if you need to keep your machine going and you don't want to take a trip to the dump uh, with your machine or contribute to uh, e-waste in on this uh, wonderful earth of ours, then uh, yeah, uh, Linux could really, uh, really help you there. So the big question is, is Zorin OS Pro uh, really worth your money? Because uh, after all, all these applications are open source. Um, all these uh, applications uh, you could download yourself if you download uh, Zorin OS Core and you could have potentially a, obviously a lean, slightly leaner system with, uh, with that type of environment. What I will say is that I believe that uh, the developers and the team behind uh, not just Zorin OS, but just generally in the Linux world, they should be rewarded for their effort. Um, I think it's uh, one of the one of the benefits, but also one of one of the uh, downsides of the open source world is, of course, uh, to write an application to put together a desktop environment such as this one. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of time. It takes people who are professionals uh, in their full time generally, or they're just very talented people. Uh, it takes them a long time to do this and a lot of thought and effort. So uh, I think they should be rewarded for their time. So I would argue quite strongly that actually for a system such as this, uh, where it's been so well put together, where the applications have been thoughtfully collected and put together for you. I mean, you really won't or shouldn't need to look for anything outside of what's already installed on your operating system or on, in your desktop environment uh, for a long time with this collection of applications, unless you have something quite specific in mind. Um, I think uh, it is uh, actually worth the, the money. So if you are looking for an operating system to replace Windows or you are looking to revive that old Intel MacBook that maybe is sitting there in the drawer now because Apple decided it's obsolete. If you're looking to revive hardware generally, uh, any type of PC or MacBook, then uh, Zorin OS could be the operating system for you. It could be uh, a very good starter if you're new to linux like i said before everything just works it really does and it works in a way that you would expect it to um, it really does feel like a very polished distribution indeed so big congrats to the zorin os team and uh, thank you again for allowing me to review uh, this release candidate of uh, zorin os 18 pro and thank you for uh, taking the time to watch this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.